Breaking news from the streaming world, Netflix lost one million members in a shocking twist of fate, sending ripples through two decades of dominance. But wait, is this the end for Netflix, or just a plot twist in their streaming tale? In today's video, we'll delve into the struggles Netflix has contended with in its rise to prominence and why the company's future is looking very bleak. Does the peril stem from harsh policy changes, lackluster content, or just streaming fatigue? Brace yourselves because the quest for truth begins with rewinding the clock to Netflix's very inception, uncovering the twists and turns that paved the path to where they are today. So, the captivating story of Netflix started in 1997 when two visionary American entrepreneurs, Reed Hastings and Mark Randolph, decided to shake up the entertainment scene. They kicked things off as an online DVD rental service that proudly put an end to those pesky late fees. Reed and Mark both have their own tales of how Netflix was born. Reed Hastings, ever relatable, recalls the moment he was hit with a $40 late fee for a single movie rental. And then there's Mark Randolph, the other half of this dynamic duo. Randolph says they were on the hunt for a business idea to take on the behemoth that is Amazon.com. In a world dominated by video rental stores, these two hustlers saw an opportunity. See, those old school rental shops lacked the finesse Netflix was about to bring to the table. Say goodbye to the days of driving out to a store, waiting in traffic and then not finding the actual movie you wanted to watch. Netflix seized the moment in April 1998. They started sending out DVDs by mail on traditional rentals. No longer did you pay for one DVD at a time. Oh no, Netflix's first game plan let users pick a whole bunch online and get them delivered straight to their doorsteps. The idea was golden, but this success wasn't an overnight sensation. In fact, rewinds in 1998, and you'll find Amazon waving $15 million at Netflix, looking to buy them out. Hastings wasn't having it though, he knew the value was greater. In the end, Netflix and Amazon did team up to some extent. They linked to each other's websites, one promoting the rental option and the other promoting an option to buy the DVD. In the end, this only helped Amazon and the little partnership quietly fizzled out. Randolph and Hastings focused on their efforts on the rental side of things, laying the groundwork for their iconic subscription model backed by an algorithm detecting viewers' preferences on movies. The plan was set in motion, however, the journey wasn't without its share of stumbles. In a notorious and catastrophic mix-up, Netflix mistakenly sent out adult content DVDs instead of the infamous Bill Clinton court case. You can imagine how customers felt both baffled and amused at the absurdity of the situation. Amid this confusion, the founders faced their own power struggle. Hastings became CEO and Randolph stepped aside, ultimately deciding that Hastings would be best suited to running the day-to-day -day and keeping everything on track. The duo worked together closely up until 2003, where Randolph would ultimately leave the company. However, these problems paled in comparison to the big bad boss of the video rental realm, Blockbuster. Blockbuster had transformed from a single spot in Dallas, Texas, to a mammoth empire of over 2,800 stores worldwide between 1985 and 1992. Then Viacom swooped in two years later, waving around a whopping $8.4 billion and sealed the deal to own Blockbuster. Around the year 2000, Hastings thought, hey, why not team up with Blockbuster instead of duking it out? So, he strolled up to John Antioco, the big cheese over at Blockbuster, and pitched a merger idea. And here's where it gets interesting. Blockbuster looked at the proposal and did a literal facepalm, laughing them out of the office. They passed on an offer that could have been their golden ticket. I mean, we're talking about Netflix putting itself on sale for a mere $50 million back then. Fast forward, and what happened? Blockbuster blinked and Netflix was soaring. Instead of being laser-focused on delivering mind-blowing and pocket-friendly entertainment to their beloved customers, Blockbuster found solace in their familiar old ways. Meanwhile, Netflix was busy perfecting its recommendation algorithm, suggesting content that was suited to their viewers' tastes. This strategy solidified their position as an undeniable powerhouse. Going back to Blockbuster, let's talk about something their customers hated, those dreaded late fees. In 2000, Blockbuster collected $800 million in late fees from customers, while Netflix was not charging anything. Blockbuster was stubbornly stuck to their old ways, while Netflix swirled in innovation. Consequently, within three years of being rejected by Blockbuster, Netflix reached a milestone of over 1 million subscribers, and by the conclusion of 2006, their subscriber count had grown to 6 million. 
By the time Blockbuster was catching its breath and filing for bankruptcy in 2010, Netflix was sipping on success, with an annual net income of a whopping $161 million. In 2007, Netflix decided to pivot big time. They launched a streaming service, altering the entertainment landscape forever. No more waiting for DVDs in the mail, no more late fees. It was a game changer, a glimpse into the future of media consumption. Little did anyone know how revolutionary this move would be. And it was in 2013 when Netflix took things to a whole new level by becoming a full-on content creator, making their original shows and snagging awesome directors and showrunners to join their squad. Now people had to sign up to Netflix to watch some of the most popular productions and titles, 2013's House of Cards being one of them. But here's where things change. Others began to take notice of Netflix's genius, and all of a sudden the streaming arena was teeming with competition. Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, Amazon Prime Video, to name a few. In fact, there's over 200 streaming services available in North America alone. Weirdly, there's hardly any noticeable difference in how these services actually work and how they appear on the screen. The situation is quite challenging for Netflix. People are actually saying goodbye to Netflix and jumping to those other streaming platforms that come with seriously competitive price tags and trendy new productions. To add to their woes, subscribers have been noticing a dip in the quality of original content on Netflix. Oh, and remember those days of sharing passwords? Well, Netflix is cracking down on that practice, raising more than just a few eyebrows. Turns out, Netflix wasn't just turning a blind eye to password sharing. It was practically their secret recipe growth. But then, out of the blue, 2022 hit them hard with subscriber losses, and suddenly, sharing passwords didn't seem so sweet. The company claimed that password sharing hurt its revenues and therefore limited its ability to invest in new content. It has previously estimated more than 100 million households worldwide share an account. They spilled the beans in May 2023, announcing they will no longer allow password sharing among multiple households. It's always been against their fancy terms of service rulebook, but they've been a bit relaxed about it until then. So if you're sharing passwords with your neighbor, you'll either have to toss them a few bucks, like $7.99 a month, or wave goodbye and set up a new account. They're automatically logging out anyone they think doesn't belong to the Netflix family. The United States isn't alone in this. They have started to clamp down on password sharing in several countries like Canada, New Zealand, Portugal, and Spain since earlier this year. This seems to have had the intended effect, however. According to Antenna, a whiz in subscription stuff, Netflix had a crazy 70,000 people signing up daily after they announced this crackdown. That's like a 25% boost compared to the months before that. While Netflix's password sharing clampdown helped boost revenue for the quarter, the company believes that there is still room to grow. Because Netflix recently gained 2.4 million new subscribers, but below more than 3 million, Wall Street analysts had expected. And guess what else is already making its way into our subscriptions? Ads. Yep, the market's buzzing about these ad-supported video-on-demand services. Research says 80% of people would prefer a low-cost ad-supported service instead of shelling out for a premium ad-free one. Currently, Netflix has a reduced payment plan that subjects viewers to around four minutes of ads per hour. Disney Plus has taken note and will be implementing a similar scheme in months to come. It's hard to know what exactly lies ahead for Netflix, but change is needed. The landscape is shifting, with short-form content on platforms like YouTube and TikTok captivating audiences' attention. To remain relevant, Netflix might have to reevaluate its pricing strategy and refuel its original content production. Will they rise to the occasion, adapting and evolving? Or will they find themselves overshadowed by nimble newcomers? What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments. Catch you in the next one.